Hello everyone and welcome back to our physics engine. We are trying to create a physics engine from scratch in C Sharp. Um, we are using Monogame to get the graphics up on the screen and also the flat library. The flat library is something we've created on this channel that allows us to get uh, two-dimensional graphics on the screen uh, really quickly and efficiently. Also gives us a two-dimensional camera and keyboard input as well. We left off with our engine. We had pretty much finished up our collision detection routine. So we can handle all the different types of collisions and you can see right now we're doing box and circle collisions or this is actually polygon circle collisions where we'd like to go now is i want to combine all these things i want to combine everything we've done into the physics world okay so let's just take everything we've done take it out of the game class let's simplify it and let's put it into the uh, physics world and start the simulation okay so back in our uh let's see back in our game class here I'm going to start moving, just start moving the stuff out of the game class and putting it into our physics world. Uh, so here's the list of bodies. Let's just cut that out of here and let's bring it into our flat world. Okay, and previously we created the flat world, but the only thing we were doing was uh, storing uh, basically some min and max values for what our physics engine would allow for different properties. Also inside our flat world, I want to have a flat vector that defines what gravity is. And this is the acceleration due to gravity. Let's quickly create the constructor here. So this will be the flat world. I'm gonna make this, I'm just gonna make some default values. Uh, for example, for gravity, let's just make that uh, what gravity is on Earth. So for the acceleration due to gravity, that's gonna be 9.81 meters per second per second. We are gonna make some way to change that in the future, but right now we'll just kind of make the defaults and not really worry about it. Uh, let's go ahead and create the body list. We need to make functions that will allow us to add bodies and remove bodies and actually get the bodies out of the list if we need to. Uh, first of all, let's add bodies to the list. Okay, so these are going to be very simple, pretty much passing through what we're doing. Um, now this one's going to be uh, remove body, and this is going to be a Boolean return, uh, depending on whether it found the body or not. Okay, and I also want to have one function that will allow me to get the body by um, index value, so I can pass in an index and retrieve it from the list. So this will be Boolean, I'm going to call this get body. So if it, if it actually found that index, or if the index is within the bounds of the array, it'll return true and, and then give you the body. If it's outside the bounds of the array, it'll return false. Okay, here's the index, and then let's pass out the body that we want to return. Okay, so let's just make sure the index is within the bounds of the array or the uh, body list. Okay, and if we get to this point, it uh, will return true because we are able to get the body out of there. We're, we are able to retrieve the body. Okay, let's go ahead and get the body from the body list. And that'll be at this current index. Okay, and one last thing, we need to make the default value for the return, the, the body return value. Okay, so that's it for all the body functions. I think uh, next, I want to be able to step through the simulation. So let's make a function called step, and we're gonna pass in the amount of time that has elapsed since the previous step in seconds. And so this is the function that we're gonna call every update in our game class. Every, every update, we're gonna call step we're going to pass in the amount of time that has elapsed since the previous update. So then the simulation can update everything on a per second basis. And in the step function, all we're going to do is, first of all, we're going to move all of the objects according to um, forces and acceleration and velocity. And then after we've moved everything, we will then go ahead and resolve all the collisions and apply impulses and we should be done. Okay, so let's go back to our game class and we're just going to start uh, bringing stuff out of the game class, putting it into the world. Uh, firstly, we're in the update function. Uh, here is all of our movement code and our collision uh, and our collision loop as well. So let's go ahead and copy all of that. Or let's just go ahead and cut that out of here and let's bring it into our step function. So we're going to cut that, go back to our flat world, and let's just paste it on in here. Um, now the collision loop, we're pretty much going to get rid of everything that's on the inside of the loop because we're going to we're going to make something that's going to simplify our code. We're going to make a function that's going to really simplify our code and make things uh, look really nice. Now, the movement code, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all of this. Okay, so first of all, here's the, uh, this will be the movement step, I'll call it, and then this will be the collision step. So first of all, let's deal with the movement step. So we're going to go back to the flat body and we're going to make a movement step for the bodies, for each body. So this, I'll just call this step as well, and we'll pass in the amount of time in seconds that has elapsed since the previous step. And very simply, all we're going to do is increment the position by the velocity. 
and then multiply it by the amount of time that has elapsed. And so all we're doing is we're, we're moving the position to the next step. And that when we multiply by the time, that'll make sure it happens on a per second basis. And then same thing with the rotation. We'll just increment that by the rotational velocity and multiply it by the time so it happens on a per second basis. Now, this will get a little bit more complicated as we start adding forces and acceleration and all that kind of stuff. But for now, let's just leave it like that, nice and simple. Uh, let's go back to our flat world class and let's tell it that we want to increment the step on this body, uh, on each one of the bodies. All right, so we'll, we'll bring in the body list at index i. We're going to step forward with this amount of time. That's it for the movement step. Now the collision step, I want to make a general function here called collide. And the collide function is going to take the two bodies. It's going to find out what type the bodies are and it's going to apply the, the specific type of collision that it needs for those types of bodies. So inside of our world uh, inside of our world class here, let's go down. Let's make another function. I'm going to call it collide. It's going to return a boolean. So if they if these two bodies are colliding, it's going to return true. If not, um, it's going to return false. So let's pass in the bodies. And then just like our collision functions, we're going to pass out the normal and the depth value. Okay, so first thing, let's find out what type of bodies we've passed in here. So first of all, let's provide some default values for the normal and depth. Okay, now let's find out what type of shape values we've got. So, okay, what is body A and what is body B? I'm going to declare some shape types here. So this will be shape type A. And we'll just go to the body and we'll get the shape type. And same thing for body B as well. Oh, let's see. And I'm actually getting an error up here. It looks like I declared this as the wrong type. So yeah, I call it a flat body. This is actually a flat vector. Okay, for our normal. All right, so back here, we know what the shape types are. First of all, let's find out what uh, the shape type of body A is. Okay, so if uh, shape type A, if it's a box, then we're going to do this. Okay, otherwise, if shape type A is a circle, then we'll do this. Now, inside each one of these, we're going we're gonna to find out what shape type B is. Okay, so on the first one, let's find out what shape type B is. Okay, otherwise, if shape type uh, B is a circle, then we'll do this, okay? And then same thing down in this uh, bottom one. We'll, take, we'll cut this out of here, and let's just put it in both. Okay, so now we know what each object is, and we can do the collision detection. Okay, so right here, um, this means shape type A is a box and shape type B is a box. Let's go ahead and call our, re our collision routine. So let's return collisions and there are two boxes, so we need the polygon intersection. So let's intersect polygons. Um, okay, so we need the vertices from body A. So we'll get the transform vertices. Um, same thing for body B, we need to get the transform vertices. And then we can just pass out the normal and the depth. Okay, and that's all there is to it. Since we've already created all these individual collision detection routines, we can just put them right in here, and then this function will get the correct values uh, passed out. So next, uh, body shape A is a box, and body shape B is a circle. So let's go ahead and return from our collisions uh, class. We're going to intersect um, circle and polygon. OK, so the circle, it wants the circle radius and the circle center. So that's going to be body B. So let's go to body B and get the position for the center and the radius. Uh, body A is going to have the vertices, since that's a polygon. So we'll get the transform vertices there. And then again, we'll just pass out the normal and the depth. All right, so now down, down here, body A is a circle and body B is a box. We're just going to do the same thing again, except uh, let's intersect uh, polygon circle. So this time body A is the circle, so we get the position from body A and the radius from body A. Okay, and then body B is the polygon, so let's get the transform vertices and then pass out the normal and the depth. Okay, and then finally, uh, from our collisions class, this time uh, shape A is a circle and shape B is a circle, so we're going to intersect circles. And so then we're just going to get the uh, position and radius from both of those bodies, and we should be done. Okay, that looks good. All right, so now if we get to the end of this if statement, so let's just, for some reason, if none of these if statements handle what we've passed in, we're just going to return false that there was no collision. So that looks good. Um, the only thing is we need to double check. We need to make sure the normal that we're passing out for our collide function is correct. And I always want this to pass out 
the normal that will push body B outside of body A. And as long as the um, body A and body B are in the right um, position as parameters, it'll work. So if we go down to this first one here, we're intersecting polygons. Body A is the first parameter and body B is the second parameter. So that will get the correct normal. Uh, now in this one, body B is the first parameter and body A is the second parameter. So this is not gonna have the right normal. So we need to reverse that. So I'm just gonna go ahead go ahead and get the result of the collision here. And then I'm going to reverse the normal. So I'm gonna reverse the normal, the sign of the normal, and then let's return the result. Okay, so that one should be good now. In this one, A is the first one and B is the second one, so that'll work. And then A is the first one and B is the second one here, and so that'll work as well. So it looks like that's the only one we had to reverse the normal on and everything else should be good. Okay, so now that we have this collide function, we can scroll back up here to our step uh, function and here's our collision loop. And all we have to do is call that collide function. So if uh, collide body A and body B, and let's pass out the normal and the depth. And that's all we have to do. It, it really simplifies our code and makes it really easy to read. Um, in fact, I really like how this is turning out. It's looking really clean and uh, so far, performance has been good. We're going to double check that in a minute here, or, or maybe in the next couple of videos. We're really going to start looking at performance and see what we got. But I really like how this function or how this, the structure of this is turning out. Okay, And if we collide, we're just going to do the same thing that we were doing before, where we just push the bodies apart. So let's go ahead and push the bodies apart. So body A, uh, we're going to move uh, the normal times the depth divided by two, and then body B is gonna get the other normal times the depth divided by two. All right, so body um, body B will move that way, but we need to reverse the sign on body, the normal of uh, moving body A, so we have to go in opposite directions. Okay, so from there, I think our world class is pretty much set up to handle everything. Um, the other thing, oh, uh, I want the user or I want to be able to pass out from the world class the number of bodies we have in our body list. So let's just make a property that will be the body count. And let's just return, uh, this is gonna be the, the count or the number of bodies in our list. Okay, so that'll be the body list count. Okay, and I think that's pretty much it. Um, this will get a little bit more complicated as we go along, but for where we are now, this looks really good. Let's go back to the game class. Uh, now we're gonna have a bunch of errors because we did remove um, all of the bodies and all that kind of stuff. So let's go ahead and correct these one by one. So first of all, um, I need to create the flat world or let's go ahead and add the flat world as a parameter to our game class. Um, okay, now down here in our initialization function, this is where we created the bodies. So instead of creating the bodies as a list here, I'm gonna create the world. Okay, so there's our flat world. Um, here's where we're, we're creating the random bodies. And instead of adding them to the list, we're gonna add them to the world, okay? So it doesn't change much. We're just kind of passing it through to the list that's inside the world class now. All right, uh, inside our update function, what do we have now? Okay, so inside our update, here's where we're moving the bodies, or we're actually moving body number one, or the, the first one in the, in the list. But I can't do that because I don't have the list anymore. I need to get, I need to get the body from the, um, from the list in our world, so, Let's ask the world to um, get a body at index zero, and we'll just call that body. And then one more thing, I'm gonna check to see if, um, if it actually worked. So if, if it wasn't able to retrieve anything at index zero, let's just throw a new exception to um, indicate there was some kind of error here with this code. Um, all right, so we'll just call this. Um, Okay, and so now we have the body at index zero, which is basically what, the same thing we're doing right here where we call body list index zero. And so all I have to do now is use the body that we got and put it right there. And then I can get rid of this line down here and that one should just work. Okay, so now we have the ability to move the body from index zero in the world with that and we can rotate it as well. All right, so there's our input. Now after that, we need to tell the world that we want to uh, step through, we need to tell the world that we want to move to the next uh, simulation step. And let's pass in the amount of time that's elapsed in, uh, we need to pass in the amount of time that has elapsed in seconds since the last step. Let's see, we're going to use the utility and we're going to get the elapsed time in seconds from the game time. 
And so as long as you're passing in the number of seconds that's occurring between steps, this will work just fine. Okay, so the update function is done. Now we need to go to the draw code. All right, so in the draw code, we can't loop through the body list anymore because <laughs> the body list doesn't exist in the game class anymore. So what we actually want to do is loop through. Uh, we want to ask the world the, the count of the bodies in the world. And so now this will ask the world how many bodies do we have, and it'll loop through all of those. And instead of getting the body from the list like this, we're actually going to get it from the world. Um, so let's ask the world to get a body at the current index, and we'll pass out that body. Okay, and again, if there is an error, I'm just going to throw an exception right here just to, you know, just for my debugging purposes. So it'll stop and, and tell me, hey, that something is wrong with this. Uh, so let's just throw a new exception here. Then we can get rid of this flat body line, and that should have... Okay, so now we can get the body at that index. Uh, let me add some text to this. Okay, so now that we have the body, let's go ahead and draw the body. And actually, I think the rest of the code is actually the same. Yeah, I'm not seeing any errors because, <laughs> yeah, we were calling it body anyways there. So that looks good. And if I were to run this, it should be pretty much the same, except for now, instead of just colliding uh, circles to polygon, it should collide whatever shape it is. They should collide uh, or, or intersect and then resolve the collision. So let's go ahead and run this and just see what happens. See if I got this right. Oh, no, I did not. Okay, uh, so could not find... Okay, so let's find out... Okay, so here's here's the issue. I wrote the function correctly, but I'm actually checking the if statement incorrectly. So I need to determine if it's not able to get the body. So I need to put a not symbol there. <laughs> okay, so now it should work. Okay, there we go. Looks good so far. And I can move this box over here. Now everything should collide with everything else as I move them around. Let's go ahead and start stacking up some objects here. All right, perfect. Yes, that's looking really good. Okay, so that looks like all I wanted to work on for today. In fact, let's rotate this and make sure the rotated uh, version is working correctly. That looks really good. Uh, I should be able to rotate through here. Okay, so there it is. Uh, we've moved everything, or we've moved all of our physics information into the physics world. And now we're ready to start really doing some simulations. And we've actually, uh, by, by doing that step, we've actually made our code look a lot nicer, a lot cleaner. So I'm really happy where this is going. Um, I'm excited that we can start working on the actual physics simulation. We're going to start, uh, hopefully very soon, applying gravity and then setting up static objects as ground that they can fall on and they can stack up. And and uh, pretty soon we're going to have to start looking at performance of our engine as well and uh, probably implementing some kind, of, some kind of sparse grid that will divide the world up into a grid so um, only the entities that are close together can... Uh, so, so we only test the entities for collision that are close together in the world. Uh, so far, you know, I, I wasn't really sure how this was going to look exactly when I got started, but I really like how this is turning out. Things are, are looking really clean, and the code is looking really good. It looks like performance is pretty good as well. We're going to do some performance testing, you know, probably in the next few videos, just to see how our intersection tests are doing. But I'm happy with this, and so hope to see you next time for our next video. And that is the beginnings of our flat world physics class.